it's good to be a high frequency trader. I don't think it's a advantage to being a high frequency trader. It just for me, because I know what I'm looking for and I'm short attention span and I can make decisions on the fly and change my mind a lot real quick. Um, and I, I have no problem being in and out and fluid with you know, second charts, you know, 15 second, five second charts. If I know what I'm looking for, I can do that. But just because I say I can do it and because I do it, that's not something that you should say, well, I should do that too, because ICT does that. All of my trading isn't based on high frequency. My examples are utilizing high frequency trading concepts because it allows me as a mentor to give you a plethora of examples of how this stuff works. Versus, like, for instance, if I was trying to teach you all this and I'm only using a daily chart, how many examples am I going to be able to show you? <laughs> it's going to be a very, very, you think I'm boring now. I'd be really boring if I was just showing you da daily chart examples. It'd be, you know, one every six or seven weeks <laughs> if, the, if I could get it that frequently. So I use these very, very low time frames to, again, thumb my nose against all the people that say that you can't time the market. There is no precision. There is no elements in these intraday charts that are based on anything that's sustainable and it can be very very fr you know frustrating for someone that would want me to teach them on a higher time frame and i'm only doing this in these lower time frames so it gives the impression that i'm pushing high frequency trading when i'm not i'm just showing you how this can work on other time frames you just have to expand your your patience beyond the scope of whatever an intraday chart would demand which obviously you know a one minute chart we could take about uh, 12 to 15 you know setups in a day if we were using a one minute chart in second intervals there's lots of setups in there you're not getting 20 pip or 20 handle runs on every single one of them but you can get three to four multiple times and that can parlay up into an, an enormous return over months and over a year now does that equate to being good as a high frequency trader for someone as a student no that that shouldn't be the reason why because you can use my concepts on any time interval or any approach to trading whether it be scalping or swing trading or position trading they're all potentially profitable and they all have incurred risks just like every other model does too so you can lose money on all of them you can make money on all of them so it's a matter of you determining as a student where your comfort level is what is your personality are you nervous when you're looking at these lower time frames? So a lot of people can't make decisions on these really short term time frames. It's scary. Like they can't commit. They get shaken out really easy. And if that's the case for you, then you're on a you're you're too small of a time frame. And that's how you that's how you evaluate it. If you're anxious at the time frame that you're looking at when you're paper trading and studying price, that time frame is too fast for you. You got to go up to a higher time frame until you find the one that works for you. It might be an hourly chart. It might it might be the daily chart for you, okay, or anyone else listening. So no, don't let that be a, a hindrance because it's about making money. And you can make money, lots of it, with just a daily chart. It just takes a lot more time for those things to develop. This is the last one. Um, grant me to speak. <laughs> uh, I said one question, you give me two. Question one, can you make example on Forex? Uh, I have already outlined one in our discussion today and you can go back to the old data and you'll see many times what i just outlined that's the part you're supposed to do that's the work and can you share those failed setup example and how to avoid them again you'll see that also in back testing that's the benefit of you doing the work number one it removes laziness and i've done more than that a typical mentor would do i'm showing you where to go to find the answers I'm showing you what it would look like or explaining what it would look like and how you would navigate it should it fail. What procedures and protocols would you follow? And you study it and you see, is there any validity to what I just said in this, in this Twitter space? Is there anything valid that constitutes a reason for you to mine or study it further and or to study it going forward as a forward walk forward test? And that approach is what every student is required to do i don't make little you know let me go on the charts and find one for you in the beginning i tried to do that and that to me it, it wore me out because if you have just a dozen students and they're always asking you 
hey, can you show me an example of this? And can you show me, how about you show me an example where you're having a problem with understanding about it? Okay. That's the problem I have with today's society and, and, and my student base, because there's a lot of laziness in that. And, it, and I think if you look at every, every medium of education, there's always going to be this group of students that just simply, you know, they want it easy. They want it right now. And I'm not beating up on you. I'm, I'm just telling you, this is how you learn it. Okay. So you go through the process like everybody else does and you submit to it. And you will find the answers to the questions you're asking or removing the doubts and the concern about whether things are valid or not. And it's beneficial for you to see when you think you might see it in a chart and it doesn't pan out. How does that make you react? Does it make you come unglued? Do you lose your mind about it all and feel like you're saying, I'm going to quit? Because if that's the case, I'm going to see right now, then you are not going to be a trader because you want it black and white. You want it win, win, win. Don't ever lose. And as much as you're going to probably, if we were talking live and, and or we were in a room together, you would probably shake your head and say, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you, yes, that's what you're saying, but you're trying to deny it. You want to avoid the pain of doing it wrong when everybody does it wrong. Every mentor, every profitable student, every profitable mentor, every profitable trader does it eventually wrong. And it will incur a loss. You will lose money. Money will be debited from your account when you do those things. That is the reality of this industry. There's absolutely nothing I have that will absolutely 100% remove the likelihood of that occurrence. It will happen. You can guarantee it's going to happen. You can bank on the fact that you're going to have a losing trade and it should not deter you. That's the difference. The difference is, is knowing that these things repeat more favorably over time then they will fail you. You will fail yourself more frequently than these concepts will fail in general because you're going to interpret it wrong. You're going to see things in the chart because you're manifesting it. You're seeing something because you want to do something to distract yourself. So there's plenty of examples where you, if you simply pick any market and go back over the last six months and you'll see where there was potentially a setup there and it would have failed. And what you would have done and if it doesn't pan out again, you know the procedures and protocols I outlined here. It's trade management. It's mitigation of drawdown. And how do you restore the drawdown? I covered all of that in this space here. So there's no reason for you to ask me or anyone else to show you examples of this, that failing. You can see them. They already happened. And you can see many of them where they panned out. And using the logic, you know, the weekly charts are already there. You can look at what, you know, last whole year of each individual weekly candle was there more expansion than the upside or the downside well that go into those back studies okay and for instance let's look at it this way let's say the nq is your study and i'm going to i'm going to say this and i'm going to close the space because i need to get off here been too been doing it too long let's just say you want to use the nq okay nasdaq futures and you pull up your weekly chart and you look at, uh, say, I'm going to just randomly pull a number out. Let's look at the weekly candle. I'm not doing it. I'm saying you do it. Seven weeks ago. Okay. Seven is just a number just jumped on my head. There's no reason why. I have no idea what seven weeks ago, what price did in net and queue. I don't, I don't recall. I don't remember. It's too far back for me to remember key levels from that time frame. If it was last week, I would. But seven weeks ago, I don't know. But what was the week prior to seven weeks ago? In other words, right now, we have not opened up on this particular trading week. And today's date is November 27th. It's 10.20 a.m. New York local time on a Sunday. So the markets are closed right now. If you go back seven weeks ago or seven candles on the weekly chart ago, the eighth week from today, you would be looking at that particular week expecting or anticipating what the following week would look like, which would be seven weeks from today. Looking back, whatever that weekly candle did on the seventh week, you should pretend right now. This is what your pseudo experience does for you. You pretend that you had it right in your, your bias. In other words, if it was an up candle that expanded higher or if it was a down candle that expanded lower. You're assuming that you had that part determined beforehand. Then what you do is you go into those particular days of that week and you look at it from a hourly standpoint. 
you break it down from hourly from Monday to Friday. Put your daily dividers on. Outline the times when the the session starts that we like to trade like 8.30 in the morning until 11 o'clock in the morning. What setups formed? How did they form? Did it reach for liquidity or did it go back into an imbalance before it created the setup that was in line with that weekly expansion, whether it be bullish or bearish? And then you do that individual day on a 15-minute candle and you do the same markups in more detail. And you do the same thing with the five-minute chart, the four-minute chart, the three-minute chart, the two-minute chart, and the one-minute chart. Oh, fuck, ICT. That's just too much. Well, get up the road if that's the way you think about it because you want to learn how to make fucking money. Money making ain't fucking easy. You got to learn how to do this shit. And it means you got to roll your sleeves up and do this stuff. If you don't want to do that, you will not learn this. You will not learn it any other way. That's the that's what separates the men from the boys, the soldiers from the cannon fodder. You have to do these things. And you have to be diligent about doing it. And you continuously do it. And you study and you study and you study. And you go through all the time frames. Just like that. And you collect Every new week of data, even if you had losing trades, you record it in your journal as if you knew that was going to happen, and you record it in your annotations. And what happens is you're retaining the pattern recognition aspects of seeing the examples seen over and over and over again, and you're recording your own annotations. Now, in truth, you're lying in the annotations about having seen it, but you're rewarding yourself visually and through annotation. So your subconscious retains it as this is a good experience. I saw this coming and I'm happy that I saw this pattern fulfill as I had learned it. Now, that's not the same as lying and saying, I took this trade like you see everybody on Twitter. I took this trade. I took the same trade as you did at ICT and they don't have their executions. That's why I don't like the, those kind of posts. You need to go through your annotation, say, I'm thankful that I see the model unfolding in this example exactly how it should have so your brain sees that you remember it because you wrote it so it's tricking your brain and providing pseudo experience it's self-talk okay it's a way of replacing anxiety and nervousness about not ever learning how to do this with positive reinforcement and you're collecting examples that you're going to refer to continuously in your study journal you're going to keep go back looking okay here's this is what that week looked like and it's wonderful resource because after, you know, there's going to be times when you look back at old moves and you think, man, I wish I had looked at a one minute chart on that day. You'll have it. And that's why it's important for you to be a specialist. You see these guys out there. Yeah, I follow 27 pairs. That makes me professional. <laughs> no, that makes you a fucking junkie. And you're not a professional. You need to specialize on one market, maybe two, but one, one market. And here's how you know there's a professional. If the, they can tell you with the 15-minute highs and lows and the five-minute highs and lows in the New York session and the London session, they're a professional. Ask, ask yourself right now, could you say what the 15-minute high and low was and the five-minute high and low was in any particular market? You probably can't. And these same people on Twitter and YouTube, and Discord, and Instagram, and Facebook. They're all full of shit. Okay, I know what I'm looking for. I know what levels I'm working on, but I can't remember it seven weeks ago. Okay, and uh, I, I just reached seven because that's the number that just jumped on my head. Mathematically, that's the number everybody's going to reach for between 10 and one anyway. But I covered a lot of stuff today. I went through something that would have otherwise only been taught if you we were one-on-one -on -one with me like it was in the 90s. Okay, I covered a lot of things that were black and white, binary. Do this, don't do that. Do this if this happens. Okay, I walked through something that would have otherwise been given to charter members in my private mentorship. You have something now that's real, it's tangible, it's something that you can work with and go forward and study back testing. And also, once you back tested and bur you know, burnt enough hours in logging, Example, how many is that? How long do I have to do this before I should know I know how to do this? You'll know when you're bored about what you're about to anticipate in the marketplace and it happens. When I say you need to be bored, you need to be fucking bored. That 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 is the surest sign. Okay. If you're looking for that, you know, that 
that sign or that, you know, way of knowing that this is what you should do. When you can call the marketplace, know that you can push it in a demo or a paper trading account. You don't care what the end result is going to be, but it's always the same thing. It's going to target more times than it's not. And you don't care. You don't care if it's money made in real terms or if it's demo. You've gotten so comfortable with the outcome being not necessarily known beforehand, but you know that you've been doing it long enough that this is the reasonable expectation as an outcome. When you feel that way about your trades in demo or in paper, that is the surest sign that you are psychologically equipped to then consider not. I'm giving you the, hey, go and do it. But that's right about the time when you can start entertaining the idea of maybe, maybe doing it with live funds or a funded account. And I know I just broke a lot of hearts by saying that, but don't you want to learn the right way? Don't you want to be equipped to do it the right way? And I know it feels like the world's crumbling all around all of us, okay? But you can't speed this stuff up. You can't make it faster. You can't skip it. You can't cut corners. You can't have it your way mentorship results and get you know, blue ribbon results. You can't deal it that way. I promise you it doesn't work like that. I've seen so many people, hundreds of thousands of students come through and predominantly every single one of them that rushed it fell right on their fucking face. And then when they slowed down, and they removed all of the Olympic expectations they were trying to place on themselves and stopped worrying about social media influence and acceptance. Then it worked. It worked for them because it took all the pressure off of it. It took all the anxiety, the performance anxiety, the, the need to do well in other people's eyes. That, that's all something that will be a stumbling block for you. Trading competitions, if you're developing and you're all rushing to get goods, you can go into trading competitions, the quiet people that talk shit, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. So you want to be bored. You want to be like your job. You hate your fucking job. You can't stand your fucking job. You can't stand the commute. You can't stand coming home. You're tired, but you know your fucking job. You don't get aroused because you're at work. You don't get excited because you're going to work. You're like, I got to do this again. Okay, it's, 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 what, it's what you got to do. That's what you have to do about your trading model. It's This is what you got to do. You got to do these things. And you know that, hey, getting up tomorrow morning to go to work, you don't know if you're going to get a flat tire. You don't know if you're going to get sacked. You don't know if you're, if you're still employed. You might get sacked. You may be made uh, redundant and removed. And you're going to see a lot of that coming forward in the next six months. A lot of people are going to be losing their jobs. And that's going to also make you feel like you got to rush. Don't. Don't. You'll undermine months of development if you invite fear and anxiety. Don't do that. Keep the focus on the right direction and be consistent. Doing these things and backtesting and collecting all these experiences and logging them and learn to love doing that. You know, I see, uh, I watched Hannah's video the other day. She goes, I hate backtesting. Girl, you better straighten your shit up. You better fall in love with that part because that's what's going to make you better. You have to love that. You have to fall in love with that. If you can't find a way to enjoy, it's almost like meditation for me, and I'm good. I still like doing it because I'm so impressed with the level of precision that the algorithm is consistently delivering. It's not randomness and it's so beautiful to see how it does what i teach you it does and it's it's almost like poetry like i mean obviously i'm biased <laughs> i mean my fingerprints are all over this fucking thing but the point is, is i literally love seeing it perform and you have to admire it even if you can't take that trade even when you lose in a trade when i take a losing trade i look at it i'm still like I still see what I did wrong. I see what I did wrong and it's still doing what it's supposed to do.